Hey y'all, hey, and welcome to Tootie Talk Sense. Y'all know it's Wednesday, so it's my daughter, Miss B and B, booking busy day. So we're gonna be at practices all day. So I'm gonna start, you know, just let, let y'all see, show my face. I'm here. Y'all like the blue hair? Hi, girl. So then I'm gonna just put the picture up. Today we're gonna be talking about uh Jada Pickett book Worthy. And I'm gonna do summarize chapters one through whatever I make it to when she get out of practice okay <laughs> so hopefully it'll be chapters one through ten because i'm gonna get some time i get some time in this car y'all so i'm gonna put this phone down put the pictures up and let's talk about it okay before i get started don't forget to comment like subscribe and share this video now i know everybody's been talking about uh you know had their opinion about jada Seems like more people didn't like it, but like I, I honestly said that I don't see a problem with Jada and what she did and, and, and the decisions that she made for her and her family and the decisions that, that Will is making to stay with her, but more power to you, let you do it. And to, uh, unless it comes to her harming someone. Opinion about the book, right? I like the book. Because the book, everybody's like, why Jada talking? Why Jada talking? If y'all watch my previous video, go to the previous video that I made about Jada. And I believe the title is, Why is Jada Made to Shut Up and Dribble? So, because this is just like, most a lot of people saying, why is Jada talking? I feel like uh, society in general would try to shut up a woman, especially a black woman. I don't, I have never seen this as much as with the Jada situation, as far as society trying to shut up a black woman. You see, have anybody said that about Britney Spears yet? And she's coming out. She, Jada was doing what everybody does when they drop a book. They do a book tour where you give the juicy information about what's in a book to get people to go buy the book. But when it was Jada, everybody like, oh, she needs to shut up. Don't nobody want to hear that Jada? <laughs> Why Jada keep talking? And I'm like, Jesus Christ, what is wrong with Jada? It's, especially uh, with reading uh, the first couple of chapters. I was like, I know, I understand why she's talking because it seems like do especially um females i don't know about other races i gotta talk about black females young black females and if you're a certain age you a, a child stayed in a child's place that didn't have to do with male or females but growing up black y'all yeah, heard it a child stayed in a child's place you spoke when you spoke to so it was made to be quiet a lot so and a lot of things that happen and this is what i'm saying black uh females a lot of things that happen to black females because of that and we wasn't learn our voice and how to speak up for ourselves and how to say no. Yeah, you say, well, black females are mouthy and blah. Like, that's probably coming from having to be quiet when you were a kid, having been taken advantage of as a kid. And when you come older, you know, some of them probably just, you don't know how to shut up. You're like, I would never be silent again. <laughs> so, baby, let me stop ranting. Let me get into this book, okay? So, it starts with... Jada's doing a prelude and she's saying on the wedding anniversary in 2012 she goes to the medicine woman she had been diagnosed with complex trauma with P PTSD and disassociation she explained how she was suicidal and every day she would wake up and just try to make it to 4 p.m to know she made it through the through another day she tried all religions her and will wasn't in a good place and hadn't been for years she began to plan a fatal accident that wouldn't look intentional. Jaden's friends are like 15 and 17. They tell Jada about their dead trip to Peru and how he experienced ayahuasca. Um, I'm assuming I'm saying that right, y'all, but y'all know I be messing up words. So, you know, you know who I'm talking about. So Jada went and talked to their dad about it. And the light she seen in his eyes made her want to do it. So she asked around. She found the medicine woman in California. And then she went. So then we go. She starts with chapter one. And the title of chapter one is My Grandmother's Garden. Marianne was Coco Brown. Short, long, straight black hair. Jamaican with East Indian blood. Gilbert is her granddad. He's from Barbados. They had four kids. Three girls and one boy. Jada Mom was the youngest. In December 1985, Jada was 13 going on 14. She was sneaking out the house in Baltimore to see her 16-year-old boyfriend. And, and I know people, the, the Jada haters probably read that. See, she always been fast. But y'all, that's normal. Cut it out. 
Y'all know most of y'all 14 dating 16 y'all. Or maybe that was just me. <laughs> I'm lying. I wasn't even allowed to date. So she remembered when she was nine, a white a white guy in a car pulled up next to her. I'm sorry, sorry y'all. I had these pages flipped because I am in this car. Let me try to make this better. Okay. So when she was nine, a white guy in a car pulled up to her, asked her about a puppy. And when she looked in the car, she seen he was uh, pleasuring himself is the best way I could put it for the YouTube censors. This moment taught her to show no fear. She felt like she had to take on masculine energy in order for people not to mess with her. So Jada mother was uh, a RN at the hospital and recently had separated from her stepfather and was working overnight. Her boyfriend was Asian and black and he worked overnight at 7-Eleven. She would go visit him until 6 a.m., then go home before her mom came home at 8 a.m. So she pretty much sneaked out the house. Now, I ain't, my mom worked overnight, but my stepfather was in the house with us, baby. I imagine the trouble my high head itself would get into <laughs> when your parents worked overnight. So Jada said that she would uh, leave the house when her mama go to work, right? At, like she finna go, go to bed and <laughs> she'll come back at uh, 6 a.m. because her mom would get home at 8 a.m. So her mother's her mom was one of four children. She got pregnant with Jada at the age of seventeen. She and stayed married for a year, then divorced, and then Jada and her mom moved back in with her mom parents. Jada was their firstborn grandchild. Her granddad was a doctor, and her mother was West Indian. And her grandmother was West Indian and graduated from Howard University and was a licensed therapist. She talks about her and her grandmother relationship, the different plant fruits, flowers that they would plant and how they would talk and how the grandmother would teach her lessons throughout this time. Her grandmother liked a spot free house. She would have to clean from top to bottom, including ceilings and floors. And Jada is like Jada and Jada says she's like that now with her house. So y'all know I'm completely opposite. My mom would have us move ovens, baby. She she wanted her spot clean. I'd be like, Mom, why? Who's coming over looking up under your oven and why? You don't need to invite somebody in your house like that. That's what I would think. I would never say it because you know my mom was better rise for the child, okay? But I am not like that. I say I feel like you're gonna go, you're gonna do either one or the other. You're gonna be just like that, you're gonna be completely opposite. I'm kinda in the middle where like my house has to be clean, but it could be disorganized. It could be it could get a little junky, that front table, all the mail just threw right there. But it can't be dirty, it can't be nasty, it still got to be clean. But I don't care about throwing something down, okay? Now but Jada said her grandma like had to have a spot spot clean house and, and she's just like that so this made her realize how you apply yourself in a small daily task is how you apply yourself in life no whoopings was allowed because it was reliving the horrors of slavery and i always wondered that like once i grew up and had kids now i know i get uh i got three and i got a stepdaughter and so i said uh, from the whoopings i used to get now don't get me wrong now. They get a little tap tap, okay? But the whoopings I used to get, I was like, this is whole, this is whole Kuta Kente here. And, and I said, uh, you know, my mama was, was gone. I said, but if she was alive, I would love to ask her why. But from my, from just outside looking in, I feel like parents who, that 60 generations, the 50s, that the era that they was born, that's what they knew. That's what they knew as discipline. Whether it's gender com coming, well, not whether. It was coming down from slavery. That that's what, uh, you know, parents of parents, that's what they was done to. Even on, on the slavery on plantations, they made other black people with black people. You know what I'm saying? So that's the way that they were raised that's what they that's how they hit their kids and then our parents whooped us like that now some of us then got up and, and not every parent but you know majority of us got whoopers that's not i know some people gonna be in my coming my mama had never hit me my daddy ain't never hit me so but i know my mama did okay so but i'm not gonna 
sit here and act like it did not happen in our community. But that it also, when she said in her book that like it, it's reliving the horrors of slavery, and it was like it is. So I, you know, sometimes you know them kids, they'll push you, baby. But <laughs> sometimes I tap, tap, tap. But I don't do it that often, okay? But I said I, I thought that was an interesting, interesting perspective. So. No tickling, because that's how they was tortured in other countries. I sound like that. They weren't allowed to tickle, because that's how they was tortured in other countries. Her grandmother was a horrible cook, but she had she had eat whatever she cooked, or she would save it for the next day until Jada ate it all. There was a library and a garden in schools in Baltimore named after her gran grandmother. She was a key player in Baltimore. Jada's grandma was a key player in Baltimore politics civil rights activists she became chair of a campaign of the first black state's attorney in baltimore and that guy eventually became baltimore first black mayor her grandmother traveled to kenya india ecuador and would bring jada small souvenirs her grandma had her in tap gym gymnastic ballet piano and reading a lot of books Marianne is her grand is her grandmother name. She considered herself an atheist and didn't believe in organized religion, but believed in love. They attended the ethnical society on Sundays where they learned about different faiths. Her grandmother believed that girls should not rely on their looks. Her grandmother suffered from paranoid schizophrenia and was hospitalized by her husband when her grandmother was young. Now, her grandmother traveled back and forth to Jamaica during her childhood and during a, a visit when she was 13 years old, she got pregnant. She gave the baby up for adoption because her father wanted nothing to do with her. And she would and and she was put in foster care where a white family took her in and she worked as a maid for them. So what she was saying, in case y'all didn't get the grasp for that when her grandma was 13 years old she was traveling back and forth to jamaica on one of them trips to jamaica she ended up getting pregnant so her father disowned her her father didn't want nothing to do with her so what she did instead and she gave the baby up for adoption then she went to work in um white people home as a maid so then we're going to chapter two Chapter two is the blessed child of two addicts. So Jada Corinne is, is Jada full name. So Jada, her first name comes from Jayla Rowland from the Secret Storm soap opera. Corinne from her mother's older sister, Karen, and changed it to and changed the A to an O so Jada could have her own version. Jada mother name is Adrian. Rob is Jada's father. He was an alcoholic and drug addict, and he was abusive to her mother. Rob was a mason. He was handsome. He was a poet, and he was eccentric. He never hit Jada and was calm around her. Her father's father, which is her grandfather, and her mother's mom, which are her grandma, are the two people who would typically show up for Jada at her plays and events. So... What she was saying is that her, her mom and dad didn't show up for her. Uh, the father role was about her grandfather, which is her um, her dad father. And then her mom, mom would show up for Jada stuff. So the pickets is Jada father's parents. They live in a majority black middle class neighborhood. Her father told her he's a drug addict and a criminal. So I can't be your father. Jada was happy that he told her the truth. Her father mother was a binge drinker. She would drink on Friday and Saturday, but not Sunday because it was the Lord's Day. Baby, ain't that some old school <laughs> hypocritical Christian <laughs> shit right there? So not on the Lord's Day. Not on the Lord's Day, I don't. You can say whatever you want, but I do not drink on the Lord's Day. I don't care how much I drink on that Friday and Saturday. The Lord Day is for the Lord. Unless it's red wine. <laughs> So Jada and her mother lived with her, her mother parents. Jada mom treated her more like a big sister. Jada didn't know her mother was on drugs. She just thought she was young and going out a lot with her friends. So let's go to tra chapter three. It's called Leaving the Garden. Jada was bullied in the second grade by, by big boys who told her if she didn't bring him $10, he would beat her up. 
So she stole the money from her granddaddy. The boy caught the boy got caught with money and Jada gave it to her gave the boy the money. So they called Jada grandma and she admitted to stealing the money from her granddaddy. Her grandma taught thought Jada should go to private school. Her mom thought Jada was just bad and she should be in school with black teachers and kids. Her grandma took her to test a monastery school where she had to write story, stories and drawings. She loved horrible books by Stephen King. So she wrote a story and drawing of a stabbing. She was eventually accepted but didn't last long when she went to another private school that's what that was all white and she lasted one day so then she went to public school she liked school but was picked on by boys and girls because she was little her mom's second husband was tony she didn't like him at first but he was a criminal attorney and the ideal guy who her mother who her grandmother thought her mother should be married to she eventually loved tony her mom was in nursing school, and she spent more time with Tony than her mom. Tony was a big kid and, and bought them a house. They went on road trips, and, and Tony family and mom loved her, and she loved them. Her grandma passed at 70. She died at 70 from bone cancer, and six months later, Tony and her mom divorced. Tony vowed to still be in Jada life, and he did until he met a new woman, and she told Tony there would be no more of seeing your ex-wife daughter. She received a phone call and the lady told her to find her real daddy. And I read that. I said, ain't that something I read? Because I'm, I'm listening to this on Audible. Y'all, I ain't going to be lying. Like, I read it. When I listened to that, I said, ain't that about some bull? How's this lady going to say? Why are you threatening for her with the daughter? When I read that the mama picked up the phone and told her, go find your real father. I said, I would never do something like that. And this woman is going, I, I know Jada was young, so she don't probably don't know the, the situation. Well, she didn't explain the situation, whether the mom was, you know, causing problems in their relationship or why this happened. But I said, that's some bullshit right there, girl. So the lady harassed her and her mom until her grandma surely called and threatened to make her life miserable. And she never heard from the woman again. But she also never heard from Tony again. And that devastated her. And I was like, that's that's sad. I know that has to be sad for her. Because first of all, she the dad that she said, you know, her dad told him, I'm a criminal. I can't be your daddy. So then the second man that she that's introduced, who's, who her mom ended up being with, ended up marrying that she didn't like initially. She ended up falling in love with him. He he loved her, her the his his family loved her, treated her like they were daughters. And once he got with a new woman, and the that new woman caused a mess in Jada them life. And when the woman stopped harassing them, she never heard from that man again. So I was like, man, that's sad because that's two men in her life that then then walked out and um disappointed her. And she said it devastated her. It broke her, and she thought she was unlovable. Are not meant to be perfect we can mourn that fact but at some point we have to accept it to, to our benefit that it's a mighty invitation to, to healing a quote but that's one of jada mom friends told her that rarely do we have ability to see our parents as people with their own history of trauma before they came into our life now this is what i didn't write it down for the first two chapters but this is something that i do like about her book that at each chapter, at the end of each chapter, she summarized and sometimes she give like little like write this in your journal or think about this and little insightful things that, you know, she usually ends the chapter with a with a quote. And she gives like a, you know, an insightful thing that you can do for that day. So when she, what she said was, rarely do we have the ability to see our parents as people, their own history of trauma before they came into our life. And and I and I said that's gonna be, and I said maybe y'all let me know if y'all want to do do that. These certain topics that she talked about, like this one, um, your parents having a history of trauma before they came into your life, and how and how it affects you, and your trauma, and if you have kids or if you're planning on having kids, are you gonna tell your kids about that trauma? You know, because I know my generation's parents didn't talk to us about their trauma. 
Do you talk to your kids about your trauma? Do you apologize when you're wrong? So I was like, certain things like this, I feel like it'll be a good uh, good topic to talk about later on. Now, um, she said, can you recognize the cycle? So chapter four was the university. The title was the University of B. Moore Streets. So the mid late 80s, Baltimore was known for murder. Her mother had divorced. They moved to a bad neighborhood. She lost her virginity at age 14. Her mom became a full addict after the loss of her mom. They're sitting on her on her mom porch with her friend. And her friend pulls up in a bin. She hops in a car. And we're talking about Jada. They're sitting on Jada's mom porch with her with Jada friend. And Jada, her friend, Jada friends pull up in a Benz. And Jada hops in a car with her friends to go to McDonald's to get to get her mom some fries. They get pulled over and a friend take and the friend end up going on a high speed chase. He, you know, he takes off when they the police pull behind them, cut on the lights, and the friends take off. He make it to the corner. He let Jada out to her go. And he go take the police on a high speed chase. So he let Jada out in this all white neighborhood. And she's just like, <laughs> you know, she's a little young black girl walking in this all white neighborhood. And they looking for people. You think they ain't going to pull her little self over? So she said the police stops her, takes her to the station where her friend was. And she tells them she didn't know anything. So the police called her mom and her mom picked her up. And her friend was a foster kid. So her friend was sent to juvie. So Jada starts ninth grade at the Baltimore Schools of Arts. So Donna Hickens, head of the theater department, looked out for her. She tells stories about how she lied to the, to her mother to go to New York for the weekend. So she she ended up saying that she didn't want to be a drug dealer girlfriend, so she started selling drugs. She started sophomore year. And that's when she met Tupac. And uh, I just keep telling y'all, y'all got to read the stuff for yourself because, you know, according to the, the narrative that's put out there, it's like, oh, Jada mentioned Tupac in chapter one. He actually don't come up to chapter four. So this is where, this is the first mention of Tupac, y'all. So she met, she starts sophomore year and she meets Tupac. So the chaos in the midst of chaos isn't funny, but chaos in the midst of order is and that's a quote by Steve Martin. Then she says, many of us become addicted to chaos so much that it becomes the norm and we don't recognize the warning. And I have, have y'all ever met somebody like that? Like when, when it, when it's come, I typically call them self-sabotagers. You know, you self-sabotage your own sabotage. I said sabotage. You self-sabotage your own life. You know, bad people, when things are going right for them, they purposely do something and they don't even know that they're doing it on purpose, but they'll screw over their whole life. Like you met a man who always with the little thoughts or the, you know, the whole, you know what I'm saying? They with the, with the, they used to the uh, sex red and stuff. They actually find a good girl and everything. Things going great, but they not used to, and, and I said a man, it could be a woman too. They not used to the happiness and sometimes some people actually find it boring and then they'll go out and cheat mess up everything got to lose everything in order for them to realize that's the best thing that ever happened to them and then they want to be sorry and try to you know find that person i'm not gonna say nelly and ashanti but i'm just saying <laughs> so that's the end of chapter four now chapter five is advanced degree and then uh, I like the Audible because, of course, Jada is reading it. But you hear the fluctuations. And, the, of course, she's an actress. So you can you can more feel the story, right? So I don't have a Baltimore accent. This sh- this shy town, this this ghetto south, that's the best you're going to get up out of me, okay? <laughs> so she starts off and she's like, all right, Pac, kiss me then. Jada dared Pac to kiss her to prove that there was no romantic chemistry between them. They kiss like a few seconds and they both pulled away Pac wiped his lips and said oh what the fuck was that and she was like see i told you dummy it felt like like brothers and sisters kissing they both knew that it was a 
strictly a friendship and nothing more, no sexual attraction. And that's how I say I like the way that, that chapter fast started. You see personality of, of who these two was. Um, Pac was poor and used his mind as a display instead of cars, jewelries, etc. They used to fight a lot because they both was fiery and had mouths, so they would hurt each other with words. Not talk for days or weeks, then start back talking. Now, y'all, man, you, I'm a Gemini, Tupac is Gemini. If it's something we could do, baby, it's to cut you down with words. Like, I know my mouth is off the track. Oh, oh, I got Missy coming up. I didn't start this radio while I was sitting in this car. I, I didn't start this car. The radio then came on. And the way I just said car, and I talk about uh, all these Chicago shows, like Chicago Fire, blah, blah, blah. Me and my husband, we watching them like, why they got everybody in there sounding like they from um, Baltimore? Is it Baltimore or Philadelphia? They'd be like, car, car. And I just heard myself say car. And, um, yeah, I guess we do. <laughs> okay, so they used to fight a lot because they both was fiery and had mouths, so they would hurt each other with words, not talk for days or weeks, then start back talking. Like I said, that's a Gemini thing. Yeah. Tupac nickname for her was Square. One shirt, two pants, and a few shirts is all Pac owned when they first met. And at that part, I was like, uh-uh, don't be do telling Pac business like that. That's one time I did say it, yeah. His mom bought him and his sister from New York to Baltimore. Both of their moms struggled with addictions, and they bonded because of this. Jada started selling drugs to make money, but she kept a job. She didn't pull Pac into that scene. She didn't pull... She then pulled Pac into the scene with her, and Pac was focused on rap at 15, 16. He, he was doing battle rap, and Jada was doing dance battles. Pac wrote a rap for her because he wanted a female rap battle group, and Jada was horrible. But she did practice every day with him through with the battles, and she went through with the battles, and they won. Pac was seemingly falling in love every week, but he had one girl that he couldn't get so he, when he had a girl he couldn't get, he sent Jada to give her a poem. And when Jada had a crush on a senior, Pac helped her out and, and introduced them. John Cole was his name. He was a white boy. They they became the three muster tears because Pac and John became close. Pac got into it with the mother and guys on the block, and Jada begged mom if she can stay one night. Next day, they explained to John and Pac stayed with John for weeks. John's mom had a stroke and it changed her. So he had lost his mom and Jada and Pac lost. Oh, so he had lost his mom and Jada and Pac lost their mother to addiction. So they connected on the fact that they all lost their mom. John introduced them to different music. Jada and John tried mushrooms together and smoked weed. Pac didn't, didn't do mind altering drugs. He only smoked a little weed and drank a little bit. Pac would deliver political sermons to Jada and John about black plight in black communities. She learned about the Black Panther Party. His mother was an ex-Panther. She learned about freedom fighters and he told her to read Angela Davis and others. Pac taught her about the history of black and deconstructions of black communities. Jada noticed that there were still gaps in the thinking of black power and civil rights activists. Both movements held black women back because women was expected to propel black men forward. Her and Pac had many debates about sexism and civil rights movement and black power movement and the ridiculous thinking how black men and fighting for their rights and autonomy had a difficult time believing that black women deserved the same and freedom. Pac and her would go at it about the subjects about 
it would grow up would go in it about the subject although she emphasized how Pac loved women especially black women john her white boyfriend would be there listening learning at their conversations one day her and john went to the store where she was followed by the store clerk she asked the store clerk are you following me john came over and smoothed things out and then they left the store john asked what's going on jada she said so you didn't see she said so you ain't see she was following me like i was gonna steal something why she didn't do that to you john asked why would she be following you jada said because i'm black john john listened as jada ranted ran it over the situation when jada was finished talking john said he get it and he's sorry she had to go she's he's sorry she had to go through that and he wished she didn't have to this moment made them both realize that they that he would never have this experience it made jada reconsider if she could ever date a white man it was hard enough dating a black man who doesn't get the struggle of a black woman but to deal with a white man who didn't have the ability to get it no matter how hard he tried which is worse john was different he operated off spirit jada Felt comfort in John, so for the time being, she stayed with him. She went from dealing low level to being bigger, and John wanted to go with her everywhere. And she had to tell him, you can't go everywhere with me. Her and John decided to go their separate ways when John almost got shot. He remains her lifelong friend. Besides John and Pac, she had some female friends. Tony is a friend who, who can skate. That's from Baltimore. Fun is her taller friend who is a bit older than her and she knew more about Jada selling than anybody else. And Fun family struggled with drug addiction as well. Ramsey was half white, half Japanese, but she looked Japanese and she witnessed racism that Japanese women face. She lived across the street from members of KKK. Ram introduced her to hardcore rock scene. Keisha was a homebody. She, she she was a safe place for Jada. She known her since middle school. The first car, her first car was a Nissan Sentra. She had her first acting job about Harriet Tubman in the Underground Railroad. She earned 6000 Her Nissan made people not suspect her with a large amount of cash and drugs on her. She found out that her mom was selling to support heroin addiction, although her mom didn't know about her. Chat was her mentor. He looked like a nerdy college kid. He came around with his UPS uniform. He kept legit jobs and was the first millionaire she knew. Jada began to think she could be a queen pin. She set up shop in locations no one was selling from, and it was good for a while. Her mom and her boyfriend wanted Jada to go to the music park. She agreed, but only if Pop could go. Pop was working jobs that john helped him get they all went with mom and boyfriend they went their separate ways jada and pop go on raz ate and had fun they saw they had a place to make their own video with green streams and jada and jada was like we have to do this pop said they don't have no one black on the list and jada said wait they have parents just don't understand Neither knew all the lyrics, but Jada persuaded Pac to do it. So that's that video y'all seen um, going around. They already knew Jada couldn't rap, so she would be the backup dancer and Pac would rap. That's the tape we see on the internet. One morning she arrived at school and she found a letter in her locker that Pac had moved to California. She had stories about how she got robbed in store after cashing her check. She found you find your love trash. Love them hard. She gives appreciation and love for the friendship she has. She asks, who are, your, who are the friends you have? Write down their name and why they are important. If you haven't told them how important they are in your life, tell them now. So chapter six, a gate to many world roads. Juilliard School, 1989. Letter comes and she wasn't accepted. It was her first rejection letter. She took, this, she took this as a sign she should keep working to be a queen pen. Donald Hickson put her on list to 
on the list to audition for University of North Carolina Arts. He thought she was a triple th threat. She can act, dance, and sing. He knew with the road she was going down that she had to get out of Baltimore streets. He thought she had more talent in her pinky finger than most people in their whole body. But she had her mind made up. She, was, she wasn't going to go to North Carolina, but she reluctantly auditioned. Her friend Keisha was the first one to call her on what she was doing with her life. That was at odds because of how Jada was. They was at odds because of how Jada was living. She took Keisha to an expensive restaurant and brought her expensive jewelry because they both loved, loved jewelry. And I said, if that ain't a nigga move right there, she mad. Her friend mad at her. She's like, come on, girl. Let me go. Let me buy you something. Take you to this restaurant. Make it up to you. So. Keisha wasn't excited and told Jada she couldn't understand why she was throwing her life away. Jada didn't expect Keisha not to accept. Jada didn't open her eyes until a classmate died in a car accident. One night, Jada went to Cherry Hill with jewelry on, what she never does. Some guys break down the door, rush in with guns, knock Jada into the recliner, and Jada piss her pants, and they rob Jada. They called BP and tell him what happened. BP arranged meeting and C, the main guy, gave her back some of the jewelry. She asked C, why you left me there? And he said, you was too pretty. Two weeks later, C was arrested for, for unaliving the two drug dealers. He bang banged them and left them in the trunk of the car and, and, sent, and he was sent to prison for life. Jada never went back to Cherry Hill. She went with Big P to help move products from a house that, that flooded and they got robbed again. So Jada, her mom, Jada's mom found little baggies and thought Jada was using and made her take a piss test. The mother didn't believe her, but found, but found she used to sell in Cherry Hill a few weeks before Jada got accepted into North Carolina. But Jada said she wasn't going but once her mom found out about Cherry Hill, she made her go. The mother and her boyfriend dropped Jada off at school two weeks later. Jada became friends with friends of her friend Fawn. Pac would call and check on her and ask, did she need something? She would say no, but he would still send her money after every call. She met Twan, who was a trumpet player, and he introduced her to jazz. He became a highly respected trumpet player. ABA Associations of Black Artists was established, although it wasn't a lot of black students. She admired Debbie Allen and Denzel Washington inspired her as well. After freshman year, she called her mom and said it didn't make sense to do three more years to become an actress. So either she'll go to law school or Hollywood. And her mother said, Hollywood it is. Look closely at the present you are constructing. It should look like the future you are dreaming and that's a quote by alice walker when we look back at a journey we will choose we see choices we made that shape the life we are living choices are the one thing that is not out of our control we can make different choices with better outcome we can have remorse and atone without forgetting that sometimes we have to live who we are not in order to know who we are you can examine the shadow writing and guide them to the light with the power of choice when we are willing to accept how we had a hand in the condition of our life and as we pay close attention to the outcome of our choices new opportunities from the universe become more apparent and available but the first step is to own your own choices and have the desire to better your life take that step with just one aspect of your life then keep taking it Okay, y'all. So that's everything. That's that was chapter one through chapter seven. So next we will go over chapter eight through chapter ten. And y'all let me know. Don't forget to like this video, comment, and share. Y'all have a good night. Bye.